What up, folks? It's your boy Naptown Born coming back at you once again. <clears throat> what we gonna talk about today? So we have two very, very one-sided fights. We had two shutouts last night. Sorry about my. Ugh, if I may seem a little sleepy, my ass is just waking the fuck up. No kids this weekend. What can I say? I'm sleeping in. <laughs> anyway, uh, two blowouts. Two blowouts last night. Complete fucking blowouts. Nate Campbell didn't win a single round, so I got to eat a big shit sandwich there and, you know, and, and give it up to uh, Victor Ortiz. But, I think, let's, let's go, fuck it, I'll get to that in a minute. Victor Ortiz won every single round against Nate Campbell. And I think you could tell from the first, after watching the first two or three rounds, you could tell... This was not going to go Nate's way. I mean, he was just being outboxed, and Victor Ortiz wasn't getting, wasn't, you know, getting into the wars that Nate seems to have been able to pull people in in the past. Could that be because Nate's getting old? Of course it could be because Nate, Nate's getting old. You know what I mean? He's 38 years old. The man's getting old. He's slower. He's, he's a little shot. He was kind of looking, he looked real sloppy in there, and uh, he really didn't want to pull the trigger all that much. And sometimes it looked like he was throwing punches um, when he knew they were going to miss, if you know what I mean. Anyway, but, you know, props to Victor Ortiz. And all that really shows is that Nate Campbell is a B or C level fighter, and Victor Ortiz has is, is definitely got to be an A level fighter right now. Um, but, moving on, you got to say the same thing about Amir Khan now. Now, whether or not you think his chin is suspect or not, and whether or not you think Paulie Malignaggi was tailor-made for him, Paul Malinowski still possessed boxing skills that he should have been able to win some rounds. What is impressive is that Amir Khan completely shut Polly down. Now, Polly wasn't really moving a whole lot. He wasn't really moving his feet at all. Not really. He was real flat-footed. And, um, I don't know, man. <laughs> Looks like he's going downhill a little early. You know what I mean? He's not moving and jabbing like he used to. You know, that's part of what makes... Fighting Polly Malinowski difficult is the way he moves and the way he pops that jab out there, but he he wasn't doing much of it, and um, he always has his hands down low. So, you know, we knew Amir Khan was going to catch him with some shots, but I really expected Polly to move more, and that's why I thought it would be a close fight. But Amir Khan, irregardless of that, Polly Malinowski still has quick hands and can still box, and Amir Khan shut him down, shut him down. Didn't win a single round, and then I think this is the very first time Pauly can say he got stopped for real because we know he didn't want to stop against Ricky Hatton, but he had no complaints. You know, I didn't listen to the interview. I'm just saying I stopped and went to bed and shit. I was tired as fuck, but from the way he looked when the ref stopped the fight, Pauly had no complaints and no arguments about that stoppage whatsoever. But, um, you know, you got to give it up to Amir Khan now. I mean, you, you have to you have to sit there and really look at him like he could be Bradley or Alexander or, you know, he could be Madonna's next opponent. He's an A-level fighter, too. Whether or not his chin is suspect, we'll have to find that out. Maybe that will drop him down to B-level status in the future. But I doubt it. Looking at the fight last night, I know Polly's feather fisted, so we can't tell much about his chin. But his boxing skills are are ultimately superior. I think they're even superior to Tim Bradley's. Don't hate. Don't fucking throw a bunch of shit my way. That's just my opinion. But to me, Amir Khan looked like a more solid, uh, you know, boxer type than than even Timothy Bradley. And Timothy Bradley's pretty good. Uh, now I would say that would be a close fight. But hey. Um, I want to get to the most exciting fight I saw last night, and that was Kevin Mitchell versus Michael Cassidy's. Now, I did end up finding somewhere to watch it, and, um, I watched it, and, look, man, Kevin Mitchell outboxed Cassidy's for two rounds, and then Cassidy's just turned the pressure on and knocked him the fuck out in the third round. That was, whew, there was one happy Australian in that ring with 30,000 <laughs> disappointed fans around him, man. He went in there, and them motherfuckers did not like him. They were booing him. They did not like him. It doesn't matter, because once he turned the pressure on, he brought Kevin Mitchell down, 
And that, to me, just makes me think that, because um, everybody said Kevin Mitchell was good before this. Remember, I didn't know much about Kevin Mitchell. But looking around YouTube with the videos and stuff and the comments and shit, Kevin Mitchell was the favorite to win, I do believe. And <laughs> Michael Katsidis, once he, once he flipped that switch, turned the pressure on him, uh, Kevin Mitchell couldn't handle it. And I don't think there is many people that can handle it, if you dig what I'm saying. Once... Once Cat Seedies finds his mark and starts dropping them bombs, it's like every single punch he throws is heavy. He's a, and they're fast. He's a beast. I think people need to be watching Michael Cat Seedies. He's a beast. And I'm glad I'm his fan because it, watching this guy fight is just pure fucking enjoyment. It is. So, right on for Michael Cat Seedies. I, I really like the guy and I was hoping he was going to win. So, I'm glad there. But. As far as my predictions, yeah, I was 1-1, one one, but really, I should have been 0-2 because I, I really thought these were going to be better, more competitive fights. I really did. But, you know, you got to give props to Victor Ortiz and Amir Khan for uh, showing us, you know, what, what they're made of, at least for now. Now, more people will bring Victor Ortiz to a war. I think somebody like Devon Alexander or Timothy Bradley can make Victor Ortiz go to war and uh, really fight. And, uh, but you know he may he may need another stepping stone before he gets to Devon Alexander or Timothy Bradley I think because Alexander's got some power in there and he's he's tall and uh, Nate was able to catch Ortiz a, a few times and you know Bradley and Alexander will be able to catch him a lot more his boxing skills are pretty good for a puncher but I think he's still more of a puncher than a boxer. I think he was just allowed to do what he did because Nate Campbell wasn't showing him much else. Um, Amir Khan, I'd really like to see him fight Marcos Madonna next. But if they set him up with Victor Ortiz, I think that would be a good test for both of them too. But I would say Amir Khan would probably beat Ortiz. But anyway, you know, um, I wouldn't say Cat Seedy's outclassed um, Mitchell either because Mitchell was outboxing for two rounds. But I would say Cat Seedy showed that you better be scared of him, man. You better stay the hell away from him or he's going to knock you the fuck out. <laughs> All right, guys. This is Naptown Born. Deuces.